Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to Resign Rebels episode 8. Uh, this is going to be keeping reselling fresh. So yeah, we have another episode uh, which is pretty cool. I've been looking forward to recording this as usual. I really do uh, get a lot of enjoyment out of recording these podcasts and I know uh, from the feedback I've had there's quite a lot of you that enjoy uh, listening to them so that's always good. It's always a, a nice uh, situation when you've got a win-win. Um, but before we get on with today's topic, I've got roughly a page of notes as always. Sometimes I have a little bit more than that actually. Um, but yeah, so before we get on with the topic, next week's topic is going to be the reality of reselling. Um, and obviously we're going to be touching upon the reality of the situation with reselling, the challenges, the, the everyday reseller. We're not going to be touching upon these splash pages or landing pages where people, uh, these internet marketers quote that you can earn $50,000 or £50,000 in the first 30 days of running an eBay business or running some sort of private label business. You know, we're going to be touching on the, the, the base ground reality of basically a small business, a small reseller uh, and what someone could expect if they're maybe... Uh, looking into reselling at the moment or just simply talking through that for people who maybe are already involved in reselling and maybe they can relate to certain things that I'm talking about in the podcast and things like that. So yeah, that's going to be next week's podcast. So don't forget, drop your comments and questions down below for that one, all centered around the reality of reselling. I will also do a community tab post as always next Monday. Um, and then you will have a couple of days to sub submit your questions over there. And I will do an Instagram post as well. And if you aren't following my, me on Instagram, very, very quick plug now. Obviously, my Instagram handle will be on the screen now. It'll also be in the description. I think it's at adsrobo96. Um, so, yeah, you can go over there and follow me over there. I do really want to try and get posting a little bit more over there. I've been slacking over the past month or two. I've not really done that many posts. So I am going to try and be active over there. Of course, I do stories over there every day. Um, but I just don't, I've not been doing posts very, very often. So anyway, that being said, we'll get on with today's uh, podcast because that was a, a very long pre-ramble. Um, so I wanted to first highlight um, the point of reselling becoming a little bit samey. Because obviously we're going to be talking today about actually the ways in which we can keep reselling fresh. Um, so I wanted to start on it actually being samey, it getting samey. Because, you know, when we first start reselling, as I've touched upon this before, we have a, a huge motivation for it. I think everyone does. Even if, let's say, you're not going to continue it. Even, let's say, if you are just someone who does it for three months or six months. It tends to, to be that everyone seems to have this this flurry of motivation whether it lasts two weeks a month six months five years is another story it really depends on on your level of of compatibility with reselling on your kind of on your level of love for reselling as well um but you know we all have that flurry of motivation at the start and it's brilliant and it's ace and i was just as much um in that kind of realm as anyone else. Uh, when I first started, I couldn't believe this was a thing. I couldn't believe that I could make money doing this. And I remember uh, packaging up certain bits and bobs. And it, 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 I just remember on certain days when I was packaging items up, I was so elated. I was so happy uh, that I found this thing and that, that it was something that you could do. But of course, you know, after doing this for a few years, like with any job, really, it can become a little bit samey. Now, I don't think it's as samey as, let's say I was in a, a full-time employed job that, you know, I, I liked, I thought it was all right, but, you know, I wasn't incredibly infused to do the job. I don't think it gets samey in that way. Um, you know, I've never really got to the point of literally despising reselling. Um, you know, with an employed job, for depending on you know if it's for you or not you, you might get to that point where you start actually actively disliking it and I don't think that's really the case with my reason I don't feel like I've ever got to a point where I really have disliked it I've got to a point though where it has become quite samey and that 
you know, you're packing items, you're picking items up, you're doing that, and it get you get into this routine, and routine is brilliant for, for the most part, but sometimes it can then lead it down a path of getting a bit samey, a bit sort of, oh, well, I'm just doing this, where am I going with this? I'm, you know, it just feels like I'm going round and round and round kind of thing. And yeah, okay, maybe I'm making half decent money, but I need something else. I need, let's say... Uh, and I just feel I need something else, whether that be a hobby or whether that be doing something different in my business. So that's what we're going to be touching upon today. So I also wanted to um, touch upon the fact that really it can get samey and you can kind of feel a little down even when you are actually being a successful reseller. So what I mean by this is that you might be earning quite a bit of money with reselling and it might be going well. But you might still be a little bit down. You might still be thinking, well, yeah, I'm earning money and I'm very, very grateful and happy that I'm earning money and that I'm doing well. But for some reason, I don't know, it just seems a bit samey at this moment. And and I've had those periods where I've been, the money wasn't necessarily an issue. I was earning a decent amount of money. But I was, think, I was starting to feel, hmm, it's getting a bit samey. A prime example of this was essentially when I was doing video games on Amazon FBA. I was making fantastic money with video games, really, really good money. I, I was making probably more than I'd, I'd made up until that point, and I, w- I was loving it, loving it for a long time, genuinely. Um, and I did it for about six months or so. But when it got to the latter part of the six months, and I was still making good money, it was still producing for me all the rest of it. Um, obviously, at the time I stopped, I think it was maybe about February. Um, so obviously, I, w- I had come down slightly from the highs of November and December of, of that previous year. But I was still making good money. And uh, I just kind of slowly wanted to do something else. It was getting samey, this repetitive nature of, right, I've got to test these consoles, then I've got to bag them up, then I've got to do this, and then, you know, get them off to Amazon FBA, and then just repeat the process with the same consoles. And when you've done it for six months, and you've had numerous amount, m- amounts of Wii consoles come in, and PS2s and stuff, and yeah, okay, there'd be the odd cool console that would come in, uh, you know, some sort of N64 variant, or uh, I had uh, a few different variants of the Super Slim PS, freeze and stuff like that the what were we called the the very very dark red one forgot i forgot what the colors are actually called but uh they actually had specific names on them like you had the um oh what were the n64 colors called um oh i forgot what the n64 colors were called it began with an f didn't it, it began with an f uh, the range of colors that we did we did like a uh, orange one, we did like a purple one, we did, I think we did a red one and uh, possibly a green one as well. Oh, Fantastic Colours, was that was that what it was called? I don't know. It was something like that anyway, something similar to that. Um, but anyway, I had, so, so I had some of these different variants in, but it was getting samey, you know, and we could put that down to the fact that I was never really a gamer and, you know, I, I gamed a little bit in... in sort of a period from 12 to 15 or something, 12, 16, 12, 17 or something. But I was never really, really highly into it. So it got a bit samey for me and then I wanted to move on and I wanted to do some different things. So that's a prime example of the fact that sometimes it can just get a bit samey um, even if you're making money. You can be being successful at something but it not be fulfilling for you. And that comes into the idea that really we do need, as as humans, as individuals, we need more than money. It's very true, you know, we need this creativity or we need to do something that we feel is adding value to a community, to the world, to whatever really. And if we don't, oh, I've just got a text. Um, so, yeah, you know, we need things that provide value to a, a greater source or a um, a greater environment, essentially, to be able to uh, really feel more fulfilled. And money, although it may do that for a while, it will get to a point where if you're just doing it for the money, it'll, it'll get samey, it'll get boring, and, and that's that. And yeah, you can... The, 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 the kind of a thing about money is that it's it's unlimited in an extent. You can keep setting new monetary goals. You can set a million, a billion... 100 billion or what you know what i mean it doesn't obviously that's a bit excessive there I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit but you can set bigger and bigger goals and it gives this illusion that you're working towards something of value 
But really, if you were to say, right, I've got a hundred million or I've got a billion, what's the difference there, really? Yeah, okay, it's 900 million. But what are you going to do with a hundred million or a billion? You know, it's an insane amount of money. I can't imagine what I would do with about 10 million. You know, it's just ridiculous. So if if you get, if you're just thinking like, oh, I'm going to go to this monetary goal and then the next one and then the next one, yeah, it's great and everything and you feel some level of satisfaction, but it's an illusionary sense of satisfaction because it's not really, it doesn't give you any substance as a uh, an organic human being, as someone with thoughts and feelings, emotions and 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 all that sort of stuff. So it can still get same even if you if you you're earning the money essentially. I wanted to next touch upon a video that Chad and Craigslist Hunter did a while ago. It was a live stream, and uh, it was basically about them two going through a period of just feeling a little bit demotivated with reselling and feeling that, as I say, it's this kind of samey nature. And those two at the time referred to the fact that they was it wasn't about the money or anything. They've that those two in particular have always made brilliant, brilliant money with reselling. And obviously, if you watch any amount of Craigslist hunted vi- videos, you'll know that he's always been really, really on it and 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 loved reselling. But we were saying in this video, you know, that they're just going through a little period where they're a bit demotivated, and you know, we don't quite necessarily know why but it, it's just one of those things that happen where it get happens where it gets a bit samey and stuff and chad said that he would like to do something different on the video and he said you know he'd maybe like to do something different with his youtube channel and then of course a, a month or two later or whatever it was he started doing these uh magnet fish, fishing videos or something like that So, you know, doing these different things can kind of help. And there's a great saying as well that my grandma always says to me, and I think I mentioned it on the podcast a few episodes back. Uh, I don't know, maybe I didn't actually, but she always says a change is as good as a rest. And essentially, if you're going to make a change, if you're going to just do something a little bit different, have a break or, well, not necessarily have a break, but have a change, it can then act as a break um and and it can it can get you back into the thing that you once loved again at a later date once you've had this kind of change so yeah i wanted to touch upon that that we all kind of i think we all kind of feel this sometime or another uh the varying levels of which you're going to feel this are going to be different because if you're really 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 passionate about resign then you're not going to feel it as much um, if you're like myself, who is very passionate about reselling, but there's also other things that I want to do, um, le- more kind of um, adding value to humanity in an emotional sense, in a psychological sense, in a philosophical st- sense, etc., then you might, your, your kind of motivation for reselling might kind of come and go, come and go, come and go a little bit. And I think it is with all of us coming and going, but as I say, it depends on the degree to which you love reselling and really are with it that that that's going to fluctuate. You know, if you really love reselling, it might not fluctuate as much. You might be fairly consistent with your motivation. So I wanted to touch upon, and this leads nicely from when I was talking about uh, magnet fishing a minute ago with Chad there, Um, Talk about hobbies and how they could uh, help provide a much needed change alongside reselling. So, you know, we can get into this routine, as I mentioned, with reselling, doing the same things day in, day out, packing your items, selling your items, all the rest of it. And uh, I think that just literally having a a hobby that you do once a week, twice a week, maybe it's a class that you go to and that's brilliant because you're being more social and stuff. But just something like that, just that change in your routine, maybe that you didn't do before, maybe you didn't do any hobbies really, you just was solely focused on your e-sign, you possibly did a few little things here and there, you possibly possibly saw a few friends and stuff, but you didn't really do anything, you didn't really have a, a fixed hobby that you do a few times a week, that you maybe even go to a class or something, as I say, doing that, having that kind of change up will will actually give you more motivation for your resign, believe it or not. It will it will allow you to have a break from it 
and just to absorb yourself in something new, in something that can expand your knowledge, in something that can expand your experience, in something that can expand your your uh, physical well-being. For example, uh, you know, doing something like Tai Chi or Kung Fu or boxing or uh, badminton or, uh, I don't know, squash or tennis or whatever it may be. That's gonna that's that's something extra. That's something different. Is gonna really make you appreciate your job, and also as well, it's gonna increase your mental well-being, physical well-being, all the rest of it, which is then gonna aid in helping your reselling. So, um, yeah, just I wanted just to quickly talk about hobbies, and you know that change, how that change can positively impact your keeping reselling fresh and actually um, enjoying it once more because I think that's quite big I think that uh, and I think it's quite I don't think it's necessarily really underrated but people don't really get fully on board with it or don't really end up doing it I mean I've been guilty of this for quite a while Um, I'm thinking of actually doing archery probably this weekend or next weekend whichever weekend I book it in for but um, I'm thinking of doing archery because I've always enjoyed the idea of archery um, and it's something that it's a sport for me that's quite nice because uh, it means that I don't actually have to do much physically. I can just literally pull the bow back and then hopefully hit a gold or whatever or one of the reds around the around the gold or whatever the colours are, I'm not sure. Um but yeah, and it means that it's a nice little sport for me because I'm a bit lazy and I can just literally stand in one spot shooting an arrow at a, at a target. Um, but just even things like that, just something like that, whatever kind of is, is your kind of thing or what you might think is your kind of thing, then then go for it, experience it, experience it and enjoy it. Uh, and that's essentially what, what, what life is all about as well as doing uh, your business, you know, your main business and stuff. Um, So I wanted to touch upon as well, understanding and reminding yourself of why you started doing this uh, in the first place and the achievements that you have made so far. So, of course, this is something that I kind of have to think to myself every now and then, not a lot of the time, but every now and then I think, you know, why why am I doing this? And the big one for me, um, which, you know, might be the same for a lot of people, but a big one for me is simply to be my own boss. It's not... To get a load of money, I mean, yeah, of course, I, I mean, I'm doing this for money. I like, I like the money and all the rest of it. But being my own boss is a is the big one because it means I don't have to take orders from anyone. It means that I can do what I want to do in the confines of some level of discipline because obviously you've got to have some level of discipline but you have a bit more flexi time to do what you want when you want kind of thing if i don't want to list during the day then i can list my items at eight or nine o'clock at night while i'm watching a bit of tv something like that so that kind of flexibility is is brilliant um and it allows me to i i say i always I always say about myself being lazy and stuff. I'm not very lazy. Um, I am, you know, if you if someone followed me around, if someone shadowed me, they'd say, why Why are you saying you're lazy? You're not, you're not lazy. But, um, you know, it, I always feel like this kind of flexi time allows me to exercise my little bit of lazy tendencies. And sometimes, as I say, I'll do my listing later on at night and stuff. So then I don't have to do as much of that in the daytime and I can do other things in the day or something um usually the other things involve YouTube or something else that could be considered work though um but yeah you know so I like that I like that idea of this kind of flexi time and stuff being your own boss um and and that sort of stuff and then the money on top of that as well being able to have a flexible income uh being able to earn have basically very few limits to what you can earn because in a regular job you know as I mentioned in one of the other podcasts you have to essentially get promoted or you have to ask for a pay rise or something to be able to increase your income it you know you're not going to be able to increase it as easily as with a um you know as if as with a sole trader business or uh you know just a business of any sort because you can you can essentially apply yourself and you can go off and do some some other new project that could potentially really really take off for you now i did just say there you can't uh, do it as easily as with a business i mean of course there is a lot of hard work to scaling up your income as a business i don't want to provide the 
um, you know, the illusion that, that it's easy or anything, but the, the opportunities are easier to come by in a business opposed to if you're in one particular job uh, and you want to increase your income. You know, it's, it's harder in that respect. But anyway, so, you know, why, reminding yourself of why you started this, thinking to yourself, why, why did I get involved with research and why did I want to do this? Why do I want to do this as a full-time job if you're working up to getting it getting involved with it as a full-time job why do i want to do this as a part-time job um you know what am i working towards am i um you know am i doing this to give my family one extra holiday a year you know you do reselling on a part-time basis and you want to give your family an extra holiday a year so you're using the money from reselling to provide for that um you know why what's your kind of thing why have you started this and 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 what can give you the motivation to continue going on it as well and also as I said the achievements that you've made so far so thinking to yourself what have I done so far with my reason where have I come how far have I come what what um things have I done that have gained me knowledge and experience what skills have I learned that I didn't know a year ago two years ago, four years ago, four years ago, um, maybe even have a go at writing them down, you know, just to remind yourself about them and even maybe write down a few skills that you'd like to go on to achieve. And um, and then obviously that'll give you some level of stability and it'll make you think, oh, right, yeah, this is what I've achieved and it's definitely worthwhile doing. Yeah, okay, I might be feeling it's a little bit samey at the moment or it's not as fresh as it once was, but look, I have actually achieved things with this and you know, I'm gonna write down the things that I could achieve if I continue going with this and 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 just essentially get with it and enjoy it for what it is because obviously you have to remind yourself that it is something that you enjoy as well. It's not something that you do as a slave or anything you're doing it because you really enjoy it so then you can start to think to yourself well you know I'm going to go on I'm going to continue enjoying this and I'm going to look forward to the future to these things that these skills that I could attain um you know if I if I am to continue so that's something as well so think about the achievements you've made so far and also think about uh potentially future things that you may want to achieve and I do talk about it in a minute, it's possibly even the next point on here, I'm not sure, about goals and things like that and how they can help you. So, uh, where's the next uh, point here? So, taking a step back if possible. Now, I know for most people this isn't going to be... Um, nece- oh, got a sale there. What's that? Oh, it's nothing brilliant. Just an auction sold. How come every time... Oh, there we go. There's the ka-ching. You might, you might have heard it. Might not. I do what I do with these, with the audio of these podcasts. Actually, is I improve the audio quality in Premiere Pro, so I reduce the background noise and stuff. So you might not have heard that as prominently as I did there. Uh, but yeah, there's a little ka-ching there. But every time I'm recording a video or I'm doing a podcast or whatever, and I get a sale, it's always a piddly little sale. It's never a 30, 40 pound, 50 pound, 60 pound sale. It's always something like a 10 pound sale, and I'm like, oh, brilliant, you know? I wish I could get a really good sale on on, on video. But anyway, so taking a step back if possible, I know, as I mentioned, that this isn't something that everyone can do, but if you can take a step back, it might help you out. If you can take a step back for a week, if you can take a step back for a couple of weeks, maybe you put your shop on holiday mode, maybe you do actually go on holiday, or possibly you don't go on holiday, but you're just um, you know, doing a few different activities uh, around, around your local area, and you're just taking a bit of a break from it, a bit of a step back. That can always be good. That can always be something that can help... Um, set you back on course and make you motivated for it again and and make it feel a little bit more fresh and a little bit less samey when you do come back to it and also you might think that let's say you've not checked your sales or you've deleted the ebay app off your phone within that week or that two weeks that you've had a break and then you come back and you think oh my god look at all these cool sales that i've got you know provided that you haven't hidden your hidden your listings on ebay um in that time you've obviously just put holiday mode on or something but because you've deleted your ebay up off your phone you don't know what's going on you don't know whether you're getting sales whether you're not and when you come back most likely you've got some decent sales in there one one or two decent sales at least and um 
And therefore, you think, oh, that's interesting, that's sold, and, and it, that break gives you a bit more love for it again. So, yeah, taking a step back, if possible. As I say, maybe not everyone can do that, though. Um, having something clearly definable to work, work towards. So, again, like I've just mentioned with these skills, having these skills to work towards, um, whether it be in your reselling, whether it be in other side projects you're doing, side businesses you're doing, having these skills that you want to gain that will then give you um, a higher level of quality, of conscientiousness, of, you know, whatever it may be, all these different traits that they may, may give you um, to be able to obviously take that business to the next level. Basically thinking to yourself, right, I want to do this and um, and I'm going to set that skill. I'm going to I'm going to work towards that skill and this is what it's going to achieve me. This is what it, this is what it's going to give me. So actually having something definable to work towards like that and as well in the form of a goal. So not necessarily the goal of getting a new skill, but just a goal in general, possibly a sales target, possibly a listings target, possibly um, you want to get involved with Amazon, so what you do, you, you know, maybe you've just been on eBay for the last two years, so you want to get involved with Amazon, so that's a goal to work towards, think to yourself, right, what do I need for this, do I need to watch some videos on YouTube, do I need to watch some courses, do I need to message a few people who I know who are resellers who sell on Amazon exclusively and who are really, really good at it. Uh, maybe they can give me some tips. Um, you know, so then you've got to define what, how you can get to the goal. But obviously, you know, just having that goal, having something in the future to work towards um, can really help kind of pull you out of this samey kind of atmosphere of reselling that you can sometimes get in and it can give you something fresh something new something positive to look forward um, to in the future and therefore that just allows you to 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 really get back to those roots of your resign and why you started it and get back to that real positive energy that, that you once had. Um, so yeah, just simply having something uh, to work towards. And I also wrote down here, if you don't have a plan, days will become very samey and boring. All the times in my reselling, the few months where I've, let's say, not really had much of a focused plan, um, I've always kind of found that the days just are boring. I'm like, yeah, what? Well, why am I doing this? What's going on here? What? What? What end is this fulfilling? Or where's this going? What's happening? Uh, am I doing the thing that I want to do? Am I waking up every morning thinking that you know this is the thing that I want to do? And uh, whatever happens today, I'm happy that I've fulfilled this. Um, I'm happy that I have have done this today. Um, and and if you're not kind of if you've not got some sort of structured plan, you're gonna just be thinking, this is samey, this is boring, I'm just going around packing the same items, listing the same items, where's it really going? Yeah, okay, it's getting me a bit of money or the rest of it, but I'm I'm not as bothered about the money anymore let's say or or you know I just I, I can pay my bills and everything I've got to that point and um you know it's just getting a bit samey for me I need something else I need some some sort of um outlet that can provide me with um a level of fulfillment again so as I say doing something different with your business um changing things up a little bit, doing some of the things we talked about can then help get you out of that and, and certainly having a plan as well can get you out of that and make you feel a little bit more secure, a little bit more focused um, and a little bit less, I want to use the word scatty I suppose, you know, a little bit more, uh, a little bit less erratic or scatty or, or just all over the place kind of thing. So yeah, having a plan is incredibly important in my opinion um going to different sourcing areas and possibly even meeting other resellers for a boost in motivation again meeting resellers who are doing well and uh, have a positive attitude will help you so of course you know one of the main things you can do 
I've I've done this, I've kind of exercised this recently. It's not helped massively with my motivation because I've only really done it once over the past few weeks. But if I were to do this numerous times over the period of, let's say, two or three weeks, I could see that this would really help with my motivation. So, you know, just go into different towns, go into different charity shops, go into different car boots, go into different auction houses. Um, and... And essentially, you're just getting involved with uh, different stock, you know, different items that you can see out and about, different locations. All these different environments really, really do help get you out of that kind of samey mentality, that boring mentality of, oh, well, I'm just going around the same places, I'm doing the same things. Always be thinking to yourself, how can I change things up? If there's something that's sticking in your life and that you're bored with it how can i change it up if there's something that you're not uh, particularly happy with how can i change it up you know for example i go around my local charity shops um oh well i'm not finding much i'm getting a bit bored with going around my local charity shops right how can you change it up well good way to change it up go to a, a town that's not necessarily incredibly far away but just maybe the next town over you go there come back oh you might feel a bit better because you've got a bit more motivation with different items different area and then the next time you go out maybe go to a different town still and then a different town still until you've kind of uh, got a radius uh, in which you're happy to go, kind of go stay within or go around and maybe in that radius you've got six or seven towns and then you think right well I'm gonna go to different ones you know, at different times, and then that's going to help me, that's going to help my motivation, and um, and I'm not going to be bored because I'm just going around that same kind of town, getting the same items, so just doing different things, changing things up, not just in relation to going to different towns, charity shopping, not just in relation to going to different car boots, not just into, in relation to auctions, but in everything that you're doing in your business, in every single little thing you do, are you bored or are you um, feeling that this isn't working out, let's say? There might be something in your business that isn't working out. Change it. Or if it maybe you don't want to completely bin the thing entirely, change what you're doing with it. You know, maybe change the quality of your work. Maybe change um, what kind of things, what kind of products you're selling in that kind of line or in that um, platform. And just change things up constantly, constantly. Think to yourself, change, 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 change. Now, it, this is something I'm exercising at the moment. I've only really been exercising it for a few months, but it's working wonders for me. Every single time, I, I, some of you will be aware, actually, from my Thursday talks, I said that I'm doing a little project on Etsy. I did have another sale, actually, uh, a couple of days ago. And... Um, I spoke to a friend of mine who I've known quite a while, another reseller, and he mentioned a site. Now, I'm not going to say the name of the site um, because obviously he's told me it. I don't know whether he's told me it in confidence or anything, but I'm just not going to mention the name of the site anyway. But there's, a, there's this site anyway that can help you out with Etsy. And um, I went on that and uh, doing um, some different rearranging with my titles and my descriptions and stuff and I was doing some rearranging with my uh, photos and things like that and uh, my keywords and my tags and all the rest of it on there loads of different things big change up and um, I did that for one morning probably about three hours work or something two three hours work and um, the last few days my views on Etsy have increased massively literally yesterday I would obviously I wasn't getting many views anyway so this kind of a percentage increase doesn't actually mean that much but um, you know my views and my my visits went up by like 400 percent which is mental um, one day I got I was getting literally one or two views a day that was it um, and then I changed up all this stuff on my on my listings using you know using the helpful tools on this site and yesterday I had 20 views and 11 visits to my shop and I can imagine that as I put more items on and I, you know I hone down my keywords and stuff I can start getting quite a few views and quite a few visits every day and uh, and those can translate into sales and it was actually funny the day after I did this I got another sale um, and the things that I sell on there they're very very low value um, they are scale it's a scalable business model it's a 
Um, it's an, an entirely online business. There's no stock or anything like that. It's the apps. You know, I think a lot of you will be aware that I've been looking for something for quite a while as a side business. I've been looking at wholesale a lot, actually, or I have done in the past, but I never could find the margins with wholesale but I've always wanted a scalable side to my business and I'm getting very very excited with this thing I'm doing on Etsy because I'm starting to think oh my god this could this could be the scalable thing in my business that I'm looking for I don't have to post anything out it's all done digitally as soon as I list the items when they sell, I don't have to do anything. Everything is taken care of with Etsy. All I need to do is get the money in my bank. That's how good it is. It's almost completely passive. That's how crazy it is. Um, now, of course, there's a lot of talk about whether passive income is a real thing or whatever. And to, for me, really, passive income is very, very much a reality. But what people don't understand about passive income is you either have to invest a hell of a lot of money into an investment to be able to get a passive income from an investment or you have to invest a hell of a, ma a lot of time in this. I mean, this Etsy store, I've been on it for one and a half months now, doing it pretty much every day, possibly only an hour or two a day, but, you know, pretty much every day, every single day. And I can see this taking another few months to build up to anything decent. Um, even for the first month, I didn't even get a sale. So, you know, you can see how that goes. And, and I've been learning new things with Photoshop, which is where I'm doing my... Uh, you know these kind of uh, products so this is where I'm making these products um, and I've been learning different things with Photoshop so I had to go on to YouTube and, and look at a few different tutorials of how I want to do things and stuff so you know th there's work involved there with any sort of level of, of in quotation marks I suppose passive income um, you know there's always some level of little work even with sustaining some passive income but I do you know I am one of those people I do believe that passive income is a thing and and it can be cultivated it's just one of those things that you know it, it can take a while but yeah so I don't even know what I was what I was saying there but yeah changing up so obviously I was changing up on my my Etsy store I've been changing up the designs that I've been doing I've been changing up the things that I've been doing the products that I've been doing constantly, literally every other day, I've been thinking, right, how can I better this? How can I do it differently? And it seems to be slowly having a positive effect actually doing that. So again, just constantly thinking, change, 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 change. Something's not working, change it. If something's working, don't change it. Don't you dare change anything that's working. Just focus on the things that aren't working and change those. And then what will happen naturally is you'll get a large amount of things that are working for a while and you don't have to change for a while and you'll have a small amount of things that you don't that you maybe do need to change um but it won't be the opposite way around you won't have loads of things that you need to change and only a few things that are that you don't need to change and that are working for you if you're constantly in that mentality of change 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 um you know and then obviously some of the things that you've um set up in the past might work for you for quite a while but then they might need to change as time goes on because that's how things work in life so yeah i just wanted to mention that uh so oh yeah also got getting back to meeting new resellers so uh meeting re new resellers who are doing well uh if you if you're meeting them if you go and sourcing with them that's going to just generally be positive just even being social with people like that um you know being around people who are positive being around people who you've known on online and stuff and finally meeting up with it's a brilliant feeling um an example i can choose for this is meeting the celtic traders if you haven't seen the video it's a video i did a couple of years ago now a year ago or something uh, and it's i think it's entitled um bar charity shop bargain hunting with the celtic traders on my channel um it's got quite a few views that one actually i mean it's got like 1.1k views or something um but it was a very nice uh, day out and i absolutely loved meeting the celtic traders um and yeah it was, it was just brilliant so when you meet new resellers when you go out sourcing with new resellers when you do different things with different people with regards to your reselling of course um then that will help keep things fresh keep um Again, it goes back to this change attitude, doesn't it? Again, it goes back to this idea of, you know, keep changing, keep doing different things, keep learning, keep meeting different people. All this sort of, this kind of theme really that runs through this this podcast is change. If you want to keep things fresh, you have to keep things changing. If you want to keep things stale, 
you don't have to do anything, but you'll have to be okay with the fact that they are being kept stale. Um, you know, if you don't want to progress in your life, then that's fine, but you have to be comfortable with that. You have to be okay with the fact that if you're not willing to change, you're probably not going to get to uh, the places that maybe other people will get. But if that's something you're okay with, then that's fine and you can sustain an income and you're just happy in that kind of realm, then that's fine. Myself, I want to expand, I want to change. I think most people want to do it. I think most people want to do different things in their life, do new things, exciting things, have different journeys. And so in order to do that, we have to better our relationship with change and enjoy um, the the game, I suppose, in one way of of doing different things and changing things up and adding this in and seeing if this works and seeing if the other works and maybe oh this didn't work but it taught me a valuable lesson and stuff so yeah so again me and new resellers that's a uh, a very big positive i also wanted to touch upon taking ri risks and upping your game buying higher value items um, or items that are outside your comfort zone now, of course, this might sound a bit scary at first, or you might be a bit nervous about spending a little bit more money on items or spending money on items that you know nothing about. But in risk or in uh, a little bit of fear, there does come a little bit of excitement. You know, for example, if you go to uh, an amusement park, a theme park or something like that, you might be a little bit nervous to go on a roller coaster or you might be a bit or you might be a little bit nervous to go on something, whatever it may be. Um, in fact, you might be very, very scared to go on a roller coaster like I've been in the past and you go on it and, uh, you know, but, but behind that fear, there's a little bit of excitement there as well. It's a little bit of um, an odd feeling of excitement and you go on that, that thing and you do it and you, you feel exhilarating and think, yeah, okay, that was a bit scary. Obviously, for something like a roller coaster is meant to be a bit scary, but it was exhilarating, it was exciting at the same time, and having done it, you really feel that rush, you know? So, although it might seem a bit scary to, to buy higher value items, although it might seem a bit scary to lay out a bit of money on things that you don't know, ultimately, that newfound experience, that newfound knowledge um, will be an excitement that then can pull you out of, again, that boring element of your reselling, that same element of your reselling that you're going through, and it will really, really help um, open your eyes to the possibility of reselling once more. And I think that that's what it's about, really. If you say me, if you're feeling a bit samey in reselling, all it is, it's about opening up your eyes to the possibility of resign, what it can actually bring for you, all the different things that it can, that it can offer. And again, we can get to that. We can get to that realization. We can get to those newfound experiences through change, of course. So again, just taking risks, jumping outside your comfort zone, all that sort of stuff uh, is, is definitely a good thing. Um, so yeah, let me just look things, uh, look at down here. Um, and then finally, we've got one more um, uh, point here. As a final, I wanted to touch upon a big change. So you could consider, um, if you're really feeling bored with your reselling, changing up your business completely. Now, of course, this is just something that is... Um, I wouldn't say a last resort, but let's just say you are feeling, you're not feeling eBay. You're really, really not feeling eBay. And maybe it just isn't for you. Maybe you've gone down that route and it really just isn't for you. Um, and you you do genuinely need a big change. And, it, and it's not the fact that reselling isn't for you. You really do feel that reselling is for you. But you just eBay, you, for whatever reason, you're not really feeling it. So... What you do is you decide to make a big change and you go over to Amazon you, and you sell something completely different. Um, you know, you're going, you're selling on a completely different platform and you're changing up completely what you sell. You're changing where you sell, you're changing what you sell, you're having a really, really big change. Um, probably the, a similar level change as, as simply just quitting reselling as well. That would be probably one up from this. Uh, that would be just as big a change or possibly a bigger change. But essentially, you know, it's a really, really, it's one of the biggest changes in reselling that you can get. Actually going from one platform to another and completely changing up everything you're doing and really taking a dive into the unknown. 
But you see, doing that will then allow you to experience a different dimension of resign that you didn't once experience. And you can go into it, yes, very, very scared, very nervous. Oh, I don't know whether this is going to work out for me. I don't know whether um, this change is going to be a good change. I don't know whether, um, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to make the sales on Amazon compared to eBay. I'm really not sure. But doing that, having that big change will give you an incredible level of excitement back because it's all new everything's new and you've not got anything to be bored with because everything's new how can you be bored with something that's all brand new that you've never explored before you know it's like kids when we go out and they're uh, you know like little kids when they're maybe three four five or whatever they're exploring the world and everything's brand new to them and they're, they're all looking around and everything's wonderful and everything also looks incredibly big doesn't it when you're a child and there's these big tall trees with these um uh, with the branches swaying in the wind and all these really sort of bright green leaves that are just floating around in the sky and we can see the really blue blue sky and all the clouds like co sort of cotton candy balls in the sky these clouds and uh, they're just looking at this brand new world that is all fantastic to explore, all new and different. And it's exactly the same with when you're making a change um, in a business, when you're making a huge change like that. It's all brand new. There's no reason to be bored. There's no way you can be bored because it's just everything's waiting for you and waiting for you to explore it just like the world is waiting for a young child to over the years go off and explore it and then obviously we get to old age and, and we've explored it and everything becomes a little bit more boring in one regard um, because of course we've we've known it for so long all the rest of it so yeah you know actually just changing things up just being involved with something new, something different, that's going to help you massively. So that is the final point. Obviously, I have a one, I have one comment today on Instagram. So I'm just going to go over to Instagram and pull that one up. And then we will finish. Um, one second. Keeping reselling fresh. That's a nice one. I made uh, the banner this week especially i wish you could see this actually but well you can do you can go over to my instagram and see this but the banner that i made on photoshop is incredibly bright this week um it's full of rainbow colors the red is the deepest red that you could ever imagine and when you're looking at it yeah your eyes actually go a little bit crazy from looking at it um so yeah i kind of did that and i wanted to see what uh, see um what people would think of that obviously no one commented it or anything but i guess that a lot of people would look at it like oh my god that's crazy my eyes my eyes shield my eyes you know um but yeah so uh, i just got this comment up one second just load in here so retro space invader someone new to to comment here um says sell things you haven't sold before i've recently started dabbling in kitchen alia and ceramics reseller since 2005 which is incredible time um to be a reseller 14 years and he went full time in July of 2019. So yeah, definitely, I agree with that. That kind of sums up the entirety of this podcast, actually, in that comment, in the theme of change, essentially, of sell things that you haven't sold before. Get involved with new things. Get involved with different areas of reselling because that will really, really help you out. So definitely, that is an incredibly good comment. Just try new things you know, met, uh, change things up, um, move on, do different things that you maybe were scared to do before, just embrace everything, embrace all of, of reselling, um, as if you are giving it a big hug, embrace all of reselling, sell, try and sell furniture if you think that that's, may, maybe what, what a good idea to do if you really are bored, if you're really feeling bored, is f find the one thing that you are a little bit scared of or, or quite scared of to sell. Not necessarily that you think that you'd just be bored with selling because obviously there's no point in selling what you're just going to think you're going to be bored with selling. Um, you know, something, for, for example, for me with clothes, I wouldn't choose to sell clothes um, because it's just something I've tried before and I just genuinely know I don't particularly like it. Oh, I'm getting 
I'm getting so many texts all the time these days. I need to put my phone on silent while I'm doing these podcasts. Um, but no, so I wouldn't do clothing because it's just kind of boring to me anyway. But something that I kind of am a little bit nervous to do, I'm quite scared to do, but that would be exciting for me at the same time is something maybe like furniture. So you could maybe try and find something that you have some fear around selling or a little bit of nervousness around selling, but that you would still think is going to be quite exciting for you. So it wouldn't necessarily be completely boring. And then run for that. Just literally run to that and think, yeah, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm going to see what, what works with this, see if, see if I enjoy it. And, and possibly that kind of real switch up, that real change, that real um, difference in your reselling and what you're selling um, will will really provide you with um, a new lease of life for Reesling. So I am going to leave it there for this one. We are on 50 minutes. I was actually a bit worried with this podcast because I thought, mm, have I chose a topic here that I can't actually deep dive into? Although... <coughs> Oh, excuse me, I'm just uh, coughing there. I had a little bit of a horse in my throat then or something. A little bit of my throat is a bit hoarse. Um, so, yeah, um, I thought to myself, oh, I don't know whether this one's going to be able to be a, a deep dive, really. But you know me, I can ramble forever. And, and it seems that whatever topic I, I give myself, I'll be probably be able to ramble for 45 minutes or so on it. So, yeah, that was Keeping Reselling Fresh. Don't forget, next week is the reality of reselling. Drop a comment down below, comment, question, or query for next week's uh, episode for the topic next week. If you'd like to message me personally over on Instagram with a topic or question or query for next week, then please do so. Um, obviously, the handle will be on screen now, or it'll probably be in my description as well. Um, I do put a post on Instagram on the Monday, and as I say... As always, a post over on the community tab on YouTube on a Monday. So if you want to drop any comments, questions or queries down below either of those posts, then you can do so as well. I try and make it quite easy uh, across different platforms for people to be able to get involved with this podcast and interact with me on this podcast in the form of the comments at the end. Um, Just, you know, so then I can interact with my audience a little bit better. So with that being said, I will leave it there for today's podcast. I will just put my notes to the side, symbolizing that we are done with today's podcast, and uh, I will see you in the next one. So I will see you very soon, guys.